Hello everyone and welcome to my beginner's guide to Kerbal Space Program. With this episode, we're actually going to get started on something that's going to carry us through the next two episodes after this one. But before I get into that, the eagle-eyed viewer might be noticing that the Kerbal Space Center doesn't quite look the same as what it has in previous videos. Specifically, these buildings, a lot of them look... Uh, they're kind of small, aren't they? Yes, they are small because I have made a change. I have switched from science mode into career mode. Mode properly, what I have done is I have taken my... I've started a new career mode game and then played it along till it got to the point where it was roughly at the same spot as the science mode game that you've been seeing in the previous episodes. Because I want to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the differences between science mode and career mode. Now, in my very first video, I said flat out, first time players, I strongly recommend you start in science mode and I still stick with that. Science mode is the simpler of the two modes. It gives you less things for you to think about. But now that we're a little bit into this series, I think it's starting, I think it's time to start putting in those extra layers that career mode provides. Now career mode has everything in it that science mode has plus more. So let's take a look at that more right now. First off, up here at the top where previously we had only science to worry about, now we have two new things to worry about. This first one here, money. Yeah, we got to think about money. We need money in this game. We need money to build our vessels. We need money also to upgrade our buildings to get them looking like those buildings that we saw when we were in science mode. And we also can use money to hire more Kerbals, but... As we'll see in just a little bit, there are actually free ways to get your Kerbals, or close to free ways to get your Kerbals, that perhaps that's not the best way in which to get our new Kerbals. But what we do need is we do need money, and we earn that money by completing what are called contracts. We'll get to those very shortly. But next, let's get into our next little thing here. This green kind of bar here is reputation. Reputation is a measure of the renown of your space program. The more things you do, the more reputation you earn. Some of those things are called milestones. Uh, you break a speed record or you get into orbit for the first time, etc. You earn milestones and these things earn you reputation. The other thing you do is contracts again. Most of the contracts give you reputation as part of their reward. The reputation dial here is a little awkward to read. It's actually a percentage from 0 to 100. And if hopefully you can see it, it's a little bit more than 25%. I would guess maybe it's around 30% whatever. <laughs> Still lots more reputation. It keeps getting a lighter and lighter green going into yellow and finally into light blue as this dial keeps moving. Anyway, let's get into the other thing that's different and that is these buildings. Okay, and we're going to start by there are two buildings that now I have access to that I didn't have access to before. One of them is this one here, Mission Control, and the other one over here is the Administration Building. Let's start by taking a look at Mission Control. And Gene Kerman welcomes us to Mission Control. This is where we get our contracts. Under the Available tab are all the contracts that I have available to pick up. Right now, I can pick up contracts to a maximum of seven. You can see I actually already have one active contract. If I click on the Active Contract tab, it tells me what that contract is. It is to plant a flag on the moon. I would like to do that in the future. That's not coming up right away. I have another thing in mind. But while I get to that, let's take a look at the third tab. The third tab is the archive tab. These are all the contracts that I've already completed in order to get to the point of where I am right now. But let's go back to available. And the one I'm eyeing, the one I'm looking at here is this one here, Rescue Aldrin Kerman from Orbit of Urban. And if I click on that, gives me more information. I have a briefing here, which you can read if you like, but the main gist of it is going to be always in bold. Rescue Aldrim Kerman, who is stranded in low Kerman orbit, and return him safely to Kerbin. And if you do that, Aldrim Kerman becomes part of your Kerbinot core, and he becomes someone you can use in future missions. This is the cheaper, and frankly, the more fun way in which to expand your Kerbinauts 
uh, and, and have more and more of them rather than just simply flat out hiring them. So in order to get this contract active, I simply have to go up here and hit the accept contract. If I want to get rid of this contract, I can hit the decline contract, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hit the accept contract. One thing I should mention, by the way, these wrote these uh, continually refresh. You can see here there's an expiration date and this is going to expire in one day five hours and etc like that that means if i wait that long this is in game time of course not real time this contract will be disappear and it'll be replaced by another one so if you have one that you want grab it while you can if i go now to the active one and take a look at it again notice that it also has a deadline i have five game years to do this i don't think that will be a problem but if I do do it, first of all, I get some money here, 5,940 curb bucks for rescuing them. That's just getting them into the capsule and then four reputation points. And then if I complete the whole thing, I get 56,133 curb bucks and nine reputation points. But if I fail, if I somehow screw up or if I choose to decline the contract, something I showed you a little earlier, I lose cash and reputation. Let's take a look at the administration building. That's the only other new building. You can see here we have four different categories. We have Mortimer in charge of finances. We have Linus in charge of science. We have Walt in charge of public relations and Gus is in charge of operations. And what the game refers to these things as are strategies. They're a way of you to personalize how much science reputation and uh what am i missing cash <laughs> science reputation and cash you receive if you feel like you want less cash but more science or more reputation but less science or anything like that that's what these are here for you you can explore these if you want we'll get back to them later but i think i've spoken about them enough i'm not going to get any of them going just yet instead what i want to talk about are upgrading the buildings okay if I take a look at a building, so for instance here, if I take a look at the administration building, it tells me that I can have one active strategy going and I can turn that strategy up to a maximum commitment of 25%. So for instance, I could take 25% of my cash that I get from a contract that I complete and convert that into science. Okay? If I to choose to spend 150,000 curb bucks, I can upgrade it. Notice if I hover over the button, it now says that I have a maximum active strategies of three, and I can push each of those up to now a 60% commitment. So the, the building becomes more powerful. I have already actually upgraded a number of buildings. Let's talk about the ones I upgraded, because I upgraded the ones that obviously I think are the more important ones to upgrade. Number one, I upgraded mission control. Mission control is now level two. At level one, you only have two active contracts you can carry. I've now got that up to seven. Remember that you get advances for many of the contracts. So the more contracts you accept, the more money you get. So actually upgrading this one early is not a bad idea. You also get flight planning. Flight planning are maneuver nodes. At the very beginning of the game, you don't have them in career mode if you want them one of the things you have to do is upgrade mission control i say one of the things because the other thing you got to do is upgrade as well the tracking station so that's why that is also level two with the tracking station upgraded i get maneuver nodes i also get patched conics this is predicting my trajectory as I move from one sphere of influence into another. So for instance, if I go from Kerbin to the moon, it will predict my trajectory around the moon before I get to the moon. That's nice to have. The science game has that automatically. However, you have to earn that in the career game. It also upgrades the power of these antennas so that you can reach out further into the Kerbal system. The next one that I upgraded was the Astronaut Complex. The Astronaut Complex is also level 2. That means I have a total capacity of 12 Kerbals that I can house. It starts at 4, I believe, because that's what you get at the very, very beginning of the game. But also, just as importantly, my Kerbals can now perform EVAs anywhere. Previously, they could only 
do EVAs on the surface of Kerbin. So if you want to start doing EVAs in other locations, like for instance in space, upgrade the astronaut complex. That's why I did that. The next thing I upgraded was the launch pad. My launch pad is also level two. Uh, this increases the size and weight of the vessels that you can launch. Right now I can launch vessels up to 140 tons. That's pretty freaking big. But this starts at 18 tons, which is not very big at all. You will find, in fact, in previous episodes, I have already launched vessels over 18 tons. And then finally, the last thing I upgraded was the vehicle assembly building. It is also level two. And the main reason I did it is to increase the max parts that I can put on a vessel. Right now, my maximum parts is 255. That's a lot of parts, but it starts at 30. 30 is not a lot of parts. <laughs> so I upgraded the vehicle assembly building as well. Um, the other thing, by the way, upgrading the vehicle assembly building did is give me basic action groups. I've talked about action groups in the past. We'll talk about them more, but they're good, so I like them. Everything else is level one, but if we take a look at my cash, I have quite a lot of it. I have about 1.2 million curve bucks, and the one I'm eyeing now is research and development. Let's go into research and development, and I'll explain why. So I want to rescue a Kerbal. So that means I would like to put a pilot into a command pod, fly that command pod, rescue the Kerbal, but I need a seat for that Kerbal. And right now I only have a one crewed command pod. Now I could get clever and start clicking things together. I could also put it on a pro body so that the thing can fly by itself. But I don't know, I want my rescued Kerbal to have company. So the thing I'm eyeing here is this command modules node. And if I click on it, the thing I want is this Mark 1-3 command pod, which can hold up to three Kerbals. I would really, really, really like that. My problem is, if I click on it, if I look at it, well, number one is I don't have the prerequisites. We'll get to that in just a little bit. But number two is that if we look here, it says that this costs 160, but I cannot research technologies over 100 because of the level of my research and development center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out here and we're going to show you how to do the upgrade. We're going to right click on the research and development center and you can see here it costs 451,000 curb bucks to upgrade. But what that gets me is now my research limit is up to 500 science points. Moreover, my Kerbals can collect surface samples. That's another source of science for me. I would really, really like them to be able to do that. And little bit of a mine, but I can transfer resources between vessels that are docked together. We haven't got to docking yet, so that's not relevant, but boy, I'd certainly like to be able to do surface samples and research higher nodes, so I'm going to click on that, and you can see that the visually it's a little bit bigger now, and it's now a level two space center. All of these, by the way, have only three levels. Level three is the top tier. Okay, let's click back in now. Now, if I want to get command modules, I gotta follow this line back. I need advanced flight control. Advanced flight control gets me some good stuff, so I'm definitely gonna do that. And now I can get myself command modules. By the way, I could also have gotten space exploration, but I decided to go this way instead. Click on that, and now I have that Mark III command pod. I still have 296.4 science, so you know what? I'm gonna get some more. And I could have you watching me do that, but I got one last thing I wanna take a look at, one last difference between career mode and science mode and that has to do with your Kerbal. So I'm going to click on the astronaut complex and I want you to take a look at the Kerbals here and notice they have levels now, right? Before they were all level five. Now Jeb and Valentina are level one. They've gained some experience. So for instance, if we take a look at Valentina here, we can look at her log and we can see that she has orbited Kerbin and she has done an orbit about the moon and that in total has earned her five experience points. Also above that, it gives you the effects of that experience. She has stability assist, that's SAS control. She has that by the way is the very beginning, that's her joy of being a pilot. She also has the ability to hold the vessel on prograde and retrograde. Those are those uh, vector locking buttons that are beside the nav ball but she doesn't have the ability to hold to other vectors like normal, radial, or to maneuver nodes, or anything like that. 
In order to get those, you have to continue to level up. Bill and Bob are actually still at level zero because they've done, well, absolutely nothing. But if they had leveled up, they would be getting perks associated with their classes as well. And that's going to be drawing this episode to an end. Next episode, we're going to be doing the build for our rescue mission. Join us then. We're going to be talking about fuel flow and how that affects the efficiencies of our rockets. But until then, I thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.